Hey everybody, this is Jacob Lyle, owner of Wildflow Land and Wildlife Management. Today we're on a track in Nash County building a duck impoundment. Wildflow Land and Wildlife Management was founded in 2018 with the desire and passion to develop and maintain natural habitat and its wildlife. Our mission is to create future values and opportunities for all of our customers, their properties, and the wildlife that call them home. We want to take you along on this journey in our video series, Taking on the Wild, where we bring you along on this wildlife adventure that we call Every Day. It's a pretty unique project we're working on. It's, it's been pretty technical and a lot of fun. So basically what we're doing here right now is we're in an existing cutover, but this cutover was not here before we got here. There's a big long swamp that runs down this side and then there's an old pond over there that was once a sand pit and they sold some of that dirt and sand to build some right away road projects. But right in the corner where they two meet is where we're building this duck impoundment. And the customer, we've done a few other projects for him, but he's owned this property five or six years. And uh, when he first got it, duck hunting was really good, just hunting the swamps and that pond back there. And over the last few years, the duck hunting has declined, and so he was trying to figure out what we could do. And, you know, first thing that comes to mind is a duck impoundment, but most of the time when you're thinking a duck impoundment, you're thinking a field and uh, building a dike around it or doing kind of a Clemson beaver device, damming up a, a swamp or something. But here we had to think outside the box. And what we ended up doing was bringing in Josh Abshire on our team. He's a sales associate with us, but he also works for Canal Wood. And so we got his expertise on this job. And one thing that he pointed out is that the majority of the timber in this area right here was pretty prime. There's a lot of good hardwoods, a lot of good, very large diameter uh, lob lolly pine. So what we did, instead of having to pay, the customer having to pay or us having to charge him an arm and a leg to build a road down here, and do a whole bunch of clearing work and then have to figure out something to do with all the stumps and logs and tops of the trees. We brought Josh in here and he was able to, to clear cut this section of timber and then give the landowner the proceeds instead of him having to pay money for us to come in here and do a bunch of clearing work. So once Josh came in here, it was about a year ago last summer, brought a logging crew in here, they clear cut this and then we found some more timber along the edge of this pond back to the corner of the property that we went ahead and did a select cut on, kind of like a park style cut. A lot of nice pretty hardwoods in there, but also when I say hardwoods, there was a lot of white oak, red oak, few handful big, I mean this big around loblolly pines and this big poplars. And so we went in there and took the pine and the poplar out, left the white oaks so that we had a lot of mass producing trees. Everything that we've done here is to keep wildlife in mind. And so we did a strip so that we could build another road back to the back corner of the property to create further access to the swamp and this pond back here. And then we did a couple small patch clear cuts, kind of like the shape of a figure eight. And once we get done with this impoundment project, if we haven't over exceeded our budget, which we're moving really quick, it's always our goal not to do that, we're gonna plug down here and build another road back there and clear that to a food plot. So we're kind of, we're always trying to kill as many birds as we can with the stones that we've got in hand. So right now, we started this project, today's Friday, we started this project on Tuesday. We brought in a Hyundai 220, it's a 52,000 pound excavator with a hydraulic thumb. And right down here where our logging deck was, it was really wet and there was a ton of slash. So as soon as Eric got started, he kind of, Move some of that slash out of the way, made a waterway and put a drainage pipe in. So now we can drive a pickup slammed right here. The average person would have seen that wet loading deck and thought you could never be able to drive a vehicle across it. So now we've got a road built up to here and we wanted to make a really nice road so that it stayed dry, it didn't wash out, we didn't have to come back and repair it. So once you start bringing heavy equipment to a rural area, it's really expensive mobilization costs. We're putting swells in the road so that the water will roll off of the road and run down the edges of the road and set up down it, creating veins and further washouts and ruts and just destroying the road. 
We want a nice road to this duck impoundment, one for accessibility, two so we can get equipment in here, tractors and planters, but most importantly is so that we can flood it. It doesn't make any sense to build a duck impoundment if you can't get something to it to properly flood it because you're going to have to do that every single year. So we've got a really good road down here. We've got an old John Deere irrigation tobacco pump and we'll put, pump water out of this pond straight into this duck impoundment. So everything kind of complements each other here. The natural topography of this property, you can see there's kind of a bowl to the left of the excavator. Now that we've got this road built down in here, Eric's gonna start picking stumps and throwing them to the side. And then we've got, we just got this delivered today. It's a Komatsu D65 with a C-frame root rate. And uh, seeing that this is a fresh cutover, it's only probably less than a year old and there's a lot of big mature trees in here, these stumps, are the most time consuming part of this project. So we had to bring in a really big dozer to be efficient. If you had a mini excavator or a small John Deere 450 or a D3 dozer, you'd kind of be turning your wheels, really beating up the piece of equipment more so than getting anything done. So we brought a really big dozer in with that root rake. Kevin's on the John Deere 450 right now. That smaller dozer is more maneuverable. You can really shape up and do waterways and swells really well with it. And then that big 220, it's normally a little bit bigger than what we like to use, but seeing that we got these big stumps and we've got a decent amount of dirt to move, we brought in a big, big excavator. And uh, we rent most of our equipment from national equipment dealers. They've been really great to work with. They have a wide variety of equipment for us and they're, they're really good about getting it to where we need it. That's always been a hassle because we're always in very rural areas. Communication is key. Once we've got it planted, so the game plan here is to try to do some short corn. Short corn has a quicker maturity date. Regular corn, you're looking at anywhere from 100, 104 to 120 days maturity time. Also, that's a low ear placement corn. So to help minimize our input cost of pumping this, traveling here, we're gonna try to go a little bit shallower on our water, and we're gonna go a little bit lower with our ear placement corn. It all kind of combines together. Every project's different, every project's technical, and we have to figure out what is the best Equipment for the job, timing of the job, planning of the job, pumping of the job, and uh, a lot of that is what I end up doing. And then we've got Eric and Kevin doing a lot of the equipment operating out here. They're really good at what they do. Thank you guys for joining us today. If you haven't already, if you would, follow us on Instagram and Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once you subscribe to our YouTube channel, click on the bell. That'll give you notifications and let you know when our next video is out. If you don't mind, take a minute or two, comment. We'd love to hear your thoughts. Just try to keep it friendly. But for now, you guys have a great day, afternoon, morning, whenever you're watching this video. And stay tuned for the next episode of Taking on the Wild.